Robert Penn Warren's novel All the King's Men was published in the year 1946. When All the King's Men opens, it is the summer of 1936. But Jack Burden is telling the story of himself and Willie Stark from the vantage point of 1939. Sugar Boy is driving Governor Willie Stark, his wife and his son, and his assistants Jack Burden, Sadie Burke and Tiny Duffy to Stark's father's farm outside Mason City, a medium-sized town in the southern United States. They stop in Mason City where Willie and the others go into a drugstore for a soft drink. From the behavior of the customers and those who work in the store and from the fact that there is a huge picture of Governor Stark there, he clearly is very well known and well liked among these people. Willie and the group continue to Willie's widowed father's farm. Willie and the group have come here primarily to take some poignant photographs of Willie at his boyhood home. Sadie, the governor's secretary, alerts Willie and Jack that Judge Ewan has reneged on a promise to support Willie's preferred candidate for the U.S. Senate. After dinner, Willie and Jack drive to Burden's Landing, Judge Ewan's home, as well as Jack's childhood home, to pay a call on the judge. The judge is an old friend of Jack's family, and Jack cautions his boss that the judge does not scare easily. Willie demands to know why the judge has changed his backing to Callahan, the man running against Willie's candidate Masters. After Willie vaguely threatens Judge Ewin, the judge tells Willie and Jack to leave. Willie demands that Jack find some dirt on the judge, however long it takes. The chapter ends with Jack in 1939, reflecting on what has happened since the summer of 1936. Masters won the Senate race, but he is now dead. Jack's friend Adam is also dead, and Jack indicates that he did get some dirt on the judge. It is 1922, and Jack is writing for the Chronicle and travels to Mason City to find out about a school construction scandal. Willie is the country treasurer, and he is trying to get the people of the county to to see that the county commissioners are scheming to give the construction contract to J.H. Moore, a company that has come in with highest bid but has ties to one of the county commissioners. Willie has reasons to believe that the bricks J.H. Moore will use are substandard. The commissioners argue that the company with a low bid is unacceptable because it will bring in blacks to do the work at low pay taking jobs away from the whites. Lucy, Willie's wife, loses her teaching job and Willie loses the next election for county treasurer. He goes back to helping his father on their farm and studying for the bar exam. Two years later, three children die and a number are crippled when the fire escape pulls away from the brick siding of the schoolhouse. Willie's earlier warnings are remembered and he becomes a hero in the county. Willie is drafted to run in the Democratic gubernatorial primary but doesn't realize that he is part of Joe Harrison's campaign plot to siphon rural votes from a third candidate, Sam McMurphy. Jack is assigned by his newspaper to cover Willie's campaign. Willie is a terrible campaigner because his speeches are about the technical details of his ideas for a new tax code. Sadie Burke, who has been secretly assigned to monitor Willie's campaign for Harrison, finally can't stand that Willie is so naive. So, she tells him all about the scheme. Willie is angry and gets drunk for the first time. Jack helps him make a campaign barbecue the next day, at which he tells the voters how he has been duped. The crowd loves his speech. He drops out of the campaign, backs Mac Murphy and swears that he will be back. In 1930, Willie runs in the Democratic primary again and goes on to win the governorship. Jack resigns from the newspaper because he doesn't feel good about using his column to support the other candidate which the paper's management has been pressurizing him to do. 
Willie calls him and offers him a job. The year is 1933. Jack shares more about his childhood and family. He takes some time off and returns to Burden's Landing to visit his mother. They go to Judge Irwin's house for dinner, where a conversation about governor Stark begins among the guests. The guests complain that he has taxed the state half to death. But Judge Irwin responds that government must provide more services now than in the past. When Jack speaks about his boss, the guests are stunned because they see that he actually believes in Stark. Back at work, Jack walks in on the governor berating Byram White, the state's auditor, for attempting to scam the state out of some money. Willie has agreed to fix it for Byram so that he is not impeached. But this means he will be beholden to Willie for the rest of his life. Willie blackmails the legislators who want to prosecute White. Hugh Miller, Willie's attorney general, resigns over this matter. Lucy becomes even more estranged from Willie and eventually moves out of the governor's mansion. In 1934, Willie runs again and wins by a huge majority. Jack remembers the visit he and the governor paid to Judge Irwin in the middle of the night and the demand Willie made concerning Jack digging up some dirt on Irwin. This particular effort to uncover a man's past is Jack's second such historical excursion. The first took place when Jack was in graduate school when he took a year or more to read and write about the journal of his great uncle Cass Mastern who died in the Civil War. Jack receives the journal from another relative and ends up using it as the basis for his doctoral dissertation in history. Jack never finishes the dissertation but falls into one of his depressive states which he calls the Great Sleep. The weight of his ancestor's history weighs heavily on Jack's mind and he still feels the evil and shame of slavery. Jack, after months and months of research and travel, and talking to many people, does find the skeleton in Judge Irwin's closet. He starts by figuring out when the judge was in need of money and follows the trial to when the judge was the state attorney general under Governor Stanton. He discovers that the American Electric Power Company bribed the judge with a high-paying position after he left public service to dismiss a case against another energy company associated with American Electric. When American Electric gave Irwin the position and the salary, it fired the current employee in that job, Mortimer Littlepaw. Littlepaw went to Governor Stanton to tell him about the scheme, but the governor would not listen to him. Soon after, Mortimer fell from a hotel window and died. But his sister still has the suicide letter. Mortimer wrote her, outlining the entire episode. In March of 1937, Jack finds the sister and the letter. While Jack is researching the skeletons in Judge Irwin's closet between the summer of 1936 and the spring of 1937, a number of things happen. One is that Tiny Duffy is annoying Willie by suggesting that the construction contract for the new Willie Stark Hospital go to Gummy Larson, a contractor in McMurphy's district. The hospital, in fact, is occupying a majority of Willie's time and energy and he intends for it to be the biggest and best free hospital in the world. Willie asks Jack to get Adam Stanton to serve as the hospital's director. Jack asks Adam but Adam refuses. Anne tells Jack that she really wants Adam to accept the governor's offer. Jack is surprised because, after all, the Stanton family has never been particularly fond of Governor Stark. Jack decides to tell Anne that Judge Irwin took a bribe and that her father was mixed up in it. A few days later, Anne calls Jack and demands to see the papers that connect her father to the bribery incident. He gives them to her and she returns them after about a week, noting that she has shown them to Adam and that he has agreed to take the job as director of the Willie Stark Hospital. Later, Jack begins to wonder how Anne knew about the hospital director's job being offered to Adam. 
he finds out from Sadie that Anne is Willie's mistress. Jack is stunned and goes to see Anne who admits to the affair. The shock of ma- imagining Anne as Willie's mistress provokes Jack to leave town for about eight days to drive west to Long Beach, California. He imagines that the west is the end of history and where you go when you get the letter saying flee all is discovered. Along the drive he sees a home movie in his mind of his life, mostly featuring Anne. He remembers most the summer that he came home from college and realized that he was in love with the 17-year-old Anne. Eventually in Jack's memories, they drift apart. Jack leaves graduate school, gets a job at the newspaper and marries Lois. Anne goes to college for the couple of years, returns to Burden's Landing and becomes engaged a number of times. The relationships never result in marriage. Lois and Jack's marriage ends in divorce. After sleeping in a Long Beach hotel for a few days, Jack drives back home. After his drive to the West Coast, Jack returns home refreshed. Seemingly a changed man, a man hired by Mac Murphy, comes to Adam's apartment to pressure him to give the hospital construction contract to Lawson. This enrages him and he writes a letter to Willie, resigning his position but does not mail it. Anne asks Jack to get Adam to remind the director. Through some fast talking, Jack is successful and Adam tears up the resignation letter. Anne also mentions to Jack that she loves Willie and that he intends to marry her after he runs for the US Senate the following year. Another crisis ensues when Tom apparently gets a girl, Sybil Frey, pregnant. The girl's father lives in McMurphy's district. McMurphy says that he will help Tom get out of the problem if Willie supports him for the Senate race the following year. But Willie is planning to run himself. Willie asks Jack if he was able to get any dirt on Judge Irwin because he thinks he can force the judge to put some pressure on his friend McMurphy about this incident. Jack replies that before he tells Willie any of what he has found, he needs to speak with the judge. Jack goes to Burden's Landing to talk to the judge about the bribery. But the judge acts as though he isn't worried and sends Jack away. Later that day, Jack and his mother get a phone call that the judge has shot himself. This is when Jack discovers that the judge was his real father. Willie decides that the only way to deal with Mac Murphy is to give the hospital construction contract to Larson, buying out Larson so that Mac Murphy will help him appease Sybil's father. Tom is quarterbacking an important game and is injured. At the hospital, the doctors realize that his injuries are severe and he may be paralyzed for life. Adam, with Willie's consent, operates on Tom in hopes of repairing the damage to his spine. But Tom's spinal cord has been crushed and the prognosis is completely paralysis. When Willie gets back to the office a couple of days later, there are indications that the injury to his son has made him see things in a different light. To begin with, he takes the hospital contract away from Lawson and demands that tiny tell Larson this news. Anne is frantic because Adam has found out about her and Willie. She believes that her relationship with the governor is why he is the new hospital director. She pleads with Jack to search the town for him. She also tells Jack that Willie is breaking it off with her and going back to Lucy. Jack eventually finds Adam looking ragged and tired at the capital. Adam, feeling that his sister has been debased by being the governor's mistress, quickly shoots Willie, and Sugar Boy responds by shooting and killing Adam. Willie lives for a few days in the hospital, then dies. Thousands of people from the country and the city throng the funeral. Jack asks Anne if she knows who called Adam and told him about Anne and Willie's relationship. She says no. Jack returns to town to look for Sadie, one of the few people who knew about Anne and Willie. He discovers that she has checked herself into a sanatorium. Sadie admits that she told Tiny Duffy to call Adam, 
because she was jealous of Willie's affair with Adam's sister Anne. She now regrets setting the entire tragedy in motion, but she remembers that Duffy's wasn't so horrified by the result because Willie's death advanced him from lieutenant governor to governor. It is implied that Duffy knew his actions might lead to Willie's death. Jack and Sadie hatch a plan to go after Duffy. Duffy offers Jack a job in his administration, but Jack refuses it. The next time Jack sees Sugar Boy, he considers telling him of Duffy's role in Willie's death. Hoping that Sugar Boy will kill Duffy, he decides not to do this. He decides not to go after Duffy because that would mean that Anne and Willie's affair would be made public. Tom eventually dies of pneumonia associated with paralysis. Jack goes to see Lucy and discovers that she has adopted Sybil's child, believing it to be Tom's child too. Jack eventually moves back to Burden's Landing to judge Irwin's house, which he has inherited and marries Anne.